The circuit in figure 2 is energized by three sinusoidal voltage sources, VA, VB, and VC. The values of those sources are given up here. VA is 3 root 2 sine 400 T plus 10 degrees. Those are in volts. And VB is 3 root 2 sine 400 T, 0 degrees. And VC, 5 root 2 sine 400 T with negative 20 degrees. The question is, part A, find the current in each source as a function of time. Current here, current there, and current there. We begin by representing those sources as phasors. 3 with 10 degrees, 3 with 0 degrees, and 5 with negative 20 degrees. And now we're going to represent every reactive element, that is, every inductor and every capacitor in the circuit, with its impedance. To determine the impedance, we need the angular frequency of the sources, which is given 400 radians per second. That is omega, 400. So we utilize the formula for impedance of an inductor, which is J omega L. Omega, in this case, is 400, and L is the value of each one of those inductors and the impedance for a capacitor, which is negative j, 1 over omega c. Let's do that for each one of the reactive components. For the 5 millihenries inductor, the impedance is j2 ohms. The impedance for the 10 millihenries uh, inductor is j4, the impedance for the 15 millihenries inductor is j6, and the impedance for the 20 millihenries inductor is j 8 ohms. The impedance of the 500 microfarad capacitor is negative J5 ohms, and the impedance of the 250 microfarad capacitor is negative J10 ohms. And now let's represent the circuit with impedances and phasors. First, the voltage phasors for the three sources. Now the impedances. Are we going to write this as 2 comma 2, 2 comma negative 5, 3 comma 6, 2 comma 4, 20, 0 comma negative 10, and 0 comma 8. For convenience, in rectangular form, the impedance of each one of the branches. Like so. Now we are ready to write equations. For that, we use M and A. Choose a reference node, this one will do, and label this as node 1. And no two. Next, the branch currents are chosen arbitrarily like so. And after that, we immediately realize there is no controlling the source, so no controlling equation, there is no evil branch, and all we're left with is only two KCL equations. Let's write those two KCL equations, one for this node one and one for node two. Currents entering the node, there are two, this one, and that one. Currents leaving the node, there are two as well, four terms. This current is VA minus V1 over 2, 2. VA minus V1 over 2, 2. Plus the current entering through this branch, that is V2 minus V1 plus 3. V2 minus V1 plus 3, which is VB. Let me write VB divided by the impedance of the branch, which is 2, 4. And that is equal to the currents leaving the branch. This current on the vertical branch is V1 divided by 2, negative 5. V1 divided 2, negative 5, plus this other current, which is V1, minus V2 divided 3, 6. Good. Let's write KCL2. KCL for node number 2. Uh, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 branches connected to that. We have 5 terms. Currents arriving in the node, uh, this one and that one, and all the other 3 currents are leaving the node. So let's begin with this one. Uh, V1 minus V2 divided 3, 6. V1 minus V2 divided 3, 6. Plus this current here, which is uh, Vc minus V2 divided 0, 8 equal to the current on this 20 ohm resistor, V2 over 20, plus the current in this capacitor, 
be 2 divided by 0, negative 10. Plus the current on the top branch, which is, as we saw before, V2 minus V1 plus VB. V2 minus V1 plus VB divided by the impedance of the branch 2, 4. Those are the two equations, and the two unknowns are V1 and V2. Let's enter them in the calculator and solve for them. 3, enter 10 degrees, so that is the first one. And the other one is just 3 volts, and the last one is 5, enter 20 negative that is, those are the three ones. What I'm going to do is store those in those three variables, D, E, and F. The first one is stored, green F, and green E, and green D. Now we have the values of VA, VB, and VC stored in those three variables, D, E, and F, which will simplify our typing of the equations. Equation writer. These are the two equations. Observe that D, E, and F appear explicitly in lieu of VA, VB, and VC. Here they are. Those are global variables. We stored the voltages of the sources in. Check out. This is VA, this is VB, and this is VC. Excellent. And now let's declare a system of two equations with two unknowns. This way. And we're going to ask for the solution of the two unknowns, V1 and V2. Invoke the symbolic solver, linear solution, and those are the answers. And immediately you realize, hey, wait a minute, those solutions are given in terms of D, E, and F. I want to evaluate that expression so the substitution is complete. But before doing that, let's break uh, this system into its components. This way, break the object into pieces, eliminate the countdown here, and now we evaluate each one of those separately. Eval, swap, eval the other one. Those are the two voltages we were looking for. V1 is 3.624 volts RMS with a phase of negative 42.449 degrees. V2 is given above. Now that we have those two voltages, V1 and V2 with respect to the reference node, we can compute the current in the source A, this IA, the current in B, and the current in C, in each one of the sources. Those three currents happen to be given in the equations already. This is IA, and this is IB, and this is IC. We substitute those two values, and they are unobtained readily, IA, IB, and IC. We begin with IA. VA minus V1 over 2, 2. VA is stored in D. So D minus V1, which we pick from the stack, pick, enter, and we're ready. We subtract it and divide by round percentages 2 space 2, and that is a current divide. You say, hey, what monstrosity is that? Well, let's eliminate the left-hand side with clear equation, and that is the current IA. 1.054 amps with a phase of 39.596 degrees. That is IA. But the exercise is asking us to write that current as a function of time. So we use the RMS value and the phase this way. The phase on one side and the function of time on the other RMS value times root 2, omega t, and the degree is times pi divided 180 to convert them into radians. And we do the same for the current in IB, this one, and for the current in IC, this one. And those are the three currents in the three sources, which is a solution of part A of this exercise. In part B, we're asked to find what is the voltage in each one of the capacitors. So the voltage in this capacitor is directly the V2, which is known now. As a function of time, you know you only have to use this RMS value of V2 times root 2, the frequency is 400 radians per second, and convert these degrees into radians the same way. You know how to do that. And this voltage in this capacitor, this one here. Well, you know V1, and you use a voltage divider between this 2 ohm resistor and this negative J5 reactor. That way, you obtain that. That would be this voltage is V1 multiplied by negative J5 divided by 2 minus J5. And that would be the voltage here. As a phasor, you can convert that as a function of time. 
What about the last? Just multiply the voltage times the complex conjugate of each one of the currents and represent them in rectangular form, which is straightforward. Thank you very much.